it feels like you know it's, it's my office meeting you know uh, so uh, i don't want to be uh, standing between you and you going home so sometimes you know we when we come from big companies we can't start talking if you don't have a powerpoint so powerpoint is my you know context doesn't i mean we can have an open discussion so it's uh, you know we were talking discussing about a lot around startups how startups where you know uh, how is the startup ecosystem getting developed who is investing where etc here is a very funny situation for us we survived two world wars 145 year old company and we survived two shifts mechanical engineering moved to electronics we survived somehow now electronics is moving to software we are wondering how to survive at least in the, when mechanical moved to electronics as bosch by the way i come from bosch i run digital business for bosch the reason i do it out of india is that there's a belief system in bosch or generally in europe that digital will happen first in the our part of the world so and hence it is pivoted out of this place so it's a good sign for anyone who is creating something around this space so when we moved from mechanical to electronics we knew who is our enemy so we fought them now but when we move from electronics to software in our area we don't know who is our enemy when i use enemy just take it as competition so it could be anything you know uh, so is a such a flat world you know it could be a google anybody i mean any of these companies could make a car today uh, while we make some components of a car so in such a world we are by the way we are 80 billion mostly touch and feel products when we speak product there has to be a physical product so this is the mindset of the company so if i can't touch and feel then that's not business so that's a because when you have one 140 year old legacy sometimes you build this in your mind so when we move into digital world where experience is a product uh, touch and feel product is somewhere under the hood it doesn't matter so when i sit in ola or uber i don't ask him you know is it a three cylinder engine or is it a 1.2 liters engine or i don't ask such questions i mean i don't even care what kind of car is it i pay for the experience so this is very difficult for us when we come from an 80 billion 140 year old company trying to pivot make uh, trying to be relevant in a world of digital natives who is going to be our future consumers i always have this anecdote you know when i speak uh, in uh, when i interact with in forums so uh, you know i speak to my daughter who passed out and you know setting up some uh, of the moving out of the house uh, and then i ask her you know try to being a bosch boschler and very proud to sell a bosch product to her who was just 21 year old i ask her you know uh, would you like to buy a bosch washing machine for example you know you're moving how do you want to set up a uh, home so the answer is very clear you know there is a company called spincycles.com you know you just there's an app i book they come and pick your laundry and then wash and deliver but you know this washing machine is so silent bosch washing machine is quiet it doesn't make any noise it doesn't conk off for 10 years but it doesn't matter for her so this is a digital native consumer at home and i work for bosch my product is irrelevant in my own house <laughs> and that's a disruption i fight <coughs> to create a new landscape for a company which has to reinvent yourself so that's where so is where is the when uh, uh, i was asked to speak and he said you are the last speaker so that's a very difficult uh, thing you know you have to be a last speaker and then he said uh your title could be what next and it looks like you know i am like an astrologer who comes and says what's going to be in the world in future so it's very tough then i said this is a typical conversation i have with my boss whenever i go to him for review he asks me where's the money honey you know i've been funding you and you know a lot of things happening and so this is the first conversation of my review with my boss so i said okay that could be the title i think this is relevant for each one of us who is trying to make a mark in the connected world because every hypothesis looks good with the data that we have and uh, uh, there has to be money but somehow when you run that money is elusive or the scale uh, defies you and the hypothesis that you build though it's extremely rational extremely logical somehow you know you start chasing the elusive scale
So that's where I, you know, uh, this from a large company perspective, who is trying to pivot, right? So we, uh, if you look at uh, our predicament, you know, we are a thing company. We know how to buy metal in commodity market, convert this into plenty of touch and feel products. And we come from a big T in IoT world of things. And from T, we more moving toward I. Here are those so many digital native companies, you know, one that is mentioned there, who are by native I, some of them moving into figuring out how to move towards T. So a Google acquiring uh, Fitbit is finding what T's I can acquire. And a Bosch or any other T company acquiring maybe an analytics company or uh, AI company or whatever is a T company moving towards I. So what's right? Both are happening at the same time. So, I mean, the conversation is who is the winner? It's not about who is the winner. Both have their own play, but so the debates or the dilemma happens both ways. So one feels you need the other one, right? So this is a con constant conversation. So though we don't see each other as competition, so would you operate with a big T and get I, or would you operate with a big I and have T in your portfolio? So that's culture of your company, the pedigree of your company, what, or what, what, are, you, what are you, sometimes you know, your pedigree, your legacy is your disadvantage. So it depends on, you can't change your culture overnight. So depending on where you come from, you configure yourself for a big T moving towards I or a big I getting into T, right? So, you know, most CDOs don't sleep these days. Uh, they are awake. I mean, I don't have to tell you. I mean, these are all normal uh, things that you bother about it. Uh, so power shifts and, you know, we, our competition landscape has changed, infinite reach. We were a if you're a classical B2B company, what you consciously ignored is the reach to see. But no longer you can ignore the reach to see. I don't think there would be any pure B2B company in the world as you go forward. So you, there will be a B2B to C company. If you ignore C, you are dead. So this is a realization. It doesn't matter what you make. Whether you make a fuel injection pump, or you make a washing machine, or you make, I don't know, power tool, it doesn't matter what you make. So you have to shift from a B2B to B2C. Even if you stay as B2B, but you have to have a reach for C. So that's the huge reach, you know, which is allowed now. So our products we sold once and forgot later. So now we want one, you know, product lifetime has shifted. So we want to figure out what is happening to my product over a period of time. So personalization, every product is getting personalized. Uh, so this, this is known, a big shift in paradigm that is happening. And all of us are fighting this battle. So on the, on the other side, you look at it, there are plenty of uh, dilemma that goes on in your mind. So there's competition between platforms. You know, there's so many platforms and either you believe in your platform or you don't believe in any platform. So there's a paralysis on platforms. When you, many, I mean, there was a panelist discussing why industrial IoT doesn't scale. So I see it as a platform paralysis. You know, they are expecting a beautifully configured world of SAP coming into industrial IoT scenario. It is some distance. It is not going to happen now. But enterprises are waiting for that day when somebody implements industrial IoT like SAP. They are waiting for that day when somebody comes and, you know, implements it with that kind of certainty. So that's platform paralysis. The scale is, you know, we're searching for scale. So this is known, you know, the CDOs are fought with, uh, you know, these dilemmas day in, day in and day out. But the opportunity is huge. You know, it's, we're not giving up on this. So when we search, what do we search? There are certain domains you pick because you believe that the IoT business is going to scale. So th this is some of the, you know, domains on which IoT business is going to scale. Let's say the connected business is going to scale. So there is no doubting this. Now its question is only the time, the time horizon that you believe in. Potentially a, a startup would believe that it is going to happen on Monday morning, you know, it is right. 
a very large company with a very diff uh, large legacy is going to say it's going to happen in three years or four years. Now, that the degree of prudence uh, is decided by the market, right? So, we b keeping few things out. You know, we had we have picked few domains which are relevant to uh, which, we, which we think is relevant. When we did this, we did, we, we didn't know, we don't even think that Bosch has a strength and hence we have to move there. It's not. And our logo is just invented for life. So that way we are very generic. So you solve life problems. You solve it in uh, agriculture. You solve it in healthcare. So that's the beauty of IoT because tech is at the front, while business was at the front and tech was at the back. So tech is at the front and business is driven by tech. So somehow you can enter into a business through a route called tech, which was very difficult in the past. Now you had to be you know, really a strong domain company to get into that business. So that way, the, you know, the opportunity is really, uh, really it's an equal opportunity for anybody. There's no big company or a small company. When I get into a healthcare as Bosch as 80 billion, and any of the startups which get into healthcare as a startup, I think we start on the same level with the same difficulty and the same, uh, you know, I, you may think as Bosch, I have an advantage as a brand. No, brand is a disadvantage. I would like to start, when we started a mobility services company inside Bosch, we called it Coop. We consciously hid, you know, we, we were hiding the Bosch brand. So brand is not a strength. So we really start on a, uh, a level playing field. In fact, startups has a advantage. So having chosen your domains where you can actually impact. So then you search for technologies. You know, we have a venture capitalist, uh, a venture VC fund called RBVC, Bosch VC. So it's some, maybe it's some months and years that, you know, that office moves to India as well. But currently it's in, uh, you know, uh, where their startup activity is very intense. And also when, when uh, uh, this fund invests, they don't look at the geography. They look at, they compare startups on a global scale. So a startup out of India solving a problem, let us say in autonomous driving, has to compete with a startup in Palo Alto or startup in Tel Aviv. So there is no, let's say this is not a cost arbitrage. So it is uh, an idea and how well you can solve the idea. So. You see, you know, we are looking for sensing capabilities, what we call as enabling, lot on sustainability, what can keep the environment clean, what can keep your product green, saving energy, so a lot of focus on that. Urban living is a big topic because, you know, 50% of world population will live in cities. And uh, if you solve any problem of urban living, you know, we believe that you're going to have a huge space. Uh, automation and electrification is a big topic coming from, uh, and you know, if you look at the technology landscape, it is clear. I don't think you would hear this from everyone. You know, what do you do with this technology is what we are trying to figure it out. So, you know, when you have figured out a domain, when you have figured out what technologies you do, then what do you do with, when you are into product development? Many of the startups are getting into product development. The few things that uh, would matter is, so if you are, see that if you look at a classical product companies, so when we say the products would get smart and they get connected, what are you doing? So you are actually closed looping a product performance or a product in the field back to engineering. The classical product lifecycle management stopped when the product moved out of the enterprise. But when you have connected products, so when we speak about products getting connected, you actually close loop this. So you monitor the performance of the product in the field and you close loop it back to your engineering. So if you are in that space, if you have a device, if you have a product which can help to monitor a, pro a touch and feel product in the field and close loop into engineering for performance validation and what you design for and how it performs, then actually I believe you are in a sweet spot. I'll give one example around that. So here is a tire company. So to whom we, uh, we actually help them to convert a, a tire, which is a physical product, into an intelligent tire or, is, uh, or a, you know, always connected tire. Now if the 
uh, idea is that, of course, you know, with this, you can pivot your business models. For a tire-making company, he can become a fleet manager, he can change it from CapEx to OpEx, and he can look at even driving behavior, you know, he can do hundreds of things. You know, there is a movement from being just a tire maker into another space. That's a business model. But when you close loop uh, a performance of a tire on the field back to the R&D or the product engineering constantly and monitor the usage, is a huge benefit. Now, when you design a product, now you need a sensor which has to go into the tire making process. Now, end of line, tire making, tire production, you need a device which seamlessly goes into the inner surface, inner surface of the tire. Now, you can't change the production process dramatically just because you're adding a product. So it has to be small. It has to go inside the tire. Needs, needs to have uh, reliable communication. And then, you know, your product has to be price competitive, Indian market, or you can sell this concept anywhere else as well if you are able to meet the uh, certifications. But then you need to be, it, it has to be stand maybe in Rajasthan or anywhere, maybe 60, 70 degrees, and you know, in some other areas, zero degrees temperature. So this particular product, now when you get this product out of sensing a tire, it's a deep tech product, because it's not just collecting one data from tire and then you're on, because you're actually looking at physical uh, parameters of rubber in variety of conditions. It's an engineering problem to be solved. When we, when we speak about, about IoT-led business, B2C gives you, you know, X to 10X sometimes. You know, when you do it in B2B world, somebody said it's a long game. So when it is deep tech, when you have to solve engineering problems, so it is extremely important that, you know, we look at, we understand the product cycles are longish. So it's a, one of the examples where if you are in that space, if you solve this problem, there are hundreds of problems to be solved like this. So mandates from companies like us is that every product that you make, I mean, believe me, 80 billion euro a company, any product that I make has to be smart, has to be connected real, real time. So which means I need something which monitors these products 24 hours 7. If you are in this space, you scale. So I've been already warned, I had to close fast, I'll close it quick. I mean, uh, I mean the, how I, I look at where to play is that in IoT business you could be, you have to pick your game, where are you going to play? Sometimes we feel that, you know, we look at it from an angle of, it's a very generic game. You can be a contributor, or you can actually control the ecosystem, or you just become a solution orchestrator. If you are a contributor, you develop a great component which is used by everyone. One example, if you are actually doing number plate recognition, let's say if you have a great algorithm, number plate recognition, this is a, you are a contributor, and this algorithm is used by anybody who would like to recognize number plates. Imagine, let's say, one billion number plates are recognized worldwide for safety, security, traffic, you know, uh, fine, traffic police, anything, any use case, but they use your algorithm because it has 90, 96%, 97% accuracy, then you are a contributor. It's still a scale. You don't burn cash like when you orchestrate an ecosystem, but you are a contributor. But when you really want to orchestrate the ecosystem, that's when you spend a lot. You know, that's a big, big game. You have to spend much. And then, you know, if you really want to, it's a long haul. B2B ecosystem orchestration is a long haul. And that's, uh, you burn a lot of cash. But if you are able to succeed there, I mean, it gives you huge scale. So when I look at choices, large companies tend to be big time contributors, less on ecosystem. So for two ecosystem bet that I pick, there'll be eight, 10, 20 contributor play. So, but, uh, but this, this, Evaluation is based on what are you good at. So you have to put yourself through this evaluation to figure out are you going to play contributor and still scale or you want to play the really the you know, uh, big game of ecosystem. So that's, uh, that's a very quick 
uh, orientation to how we approach. Uh, I mean, quick summary. I think if you are to create uh, industrial IoT, if anybody is doing industrial IoT startups, if you want to play this game and scale, you know, don't don't position your product to solve per enterprise. Solve it for the industry. Because if you say I'm going to solve per enterprise, it's a hard sell. In industrial IoT, there is no scale. If you want to solve it for the industry, I think then the, you get the scale. So if you are in an enterprise, I'll fix a problem in an enterprise, then you have a challenge. So uh, please take a position. You know, if you, whether you are a contributor or an ecosystem player, depending on that, you decide your cash burn and the time uh, horizon with which you operate. Uh, that's very important. Otherwise, if you're a generic player, you know, the diffusion is going to kill us, right? So orchestrate, I mean, many a times when I, the example that I showed for tire, if I go to the world and say, I am going to orchestrate the tire ecosystem of the world, I think I'm going to drown Bosch. Sure. But if I say, I'll join hands with, a, let's say, a tire company which has a 50% market share uh, in any geography, and I, I'm okay to you know, let go of some of my interests because I want to co-orchestrate with him, I think you're going to be a lot more successful. So it's better to go with a market leader. The second is meta, meta uh, ecosystem orchestration is basically look for positioning. It is good to position yourself at a cross-section of multiple domains rather than to get too niche. And you know, one example is you know, Uber Eats. So from our language, Uber is a mobility company. When, you, when Uber gets into supplying food, it's actually getting into food logistics. So the cross-section is mobility and logistics. So you derive a lot more value. So when I solve a parking problem, it's a mobility problem and a building problem. So the, the cross-section, you, you, you have a better chance of scale. Right? So the software versus hardware is a big dilemma. So because hardware is going to get you know, commoditized, whichever hardware you do, it's going to get commoditized over a period of time. So you have to, at some stage, shift your uh, position towards software. You may not be able to do that initially because you know, people don't value software right from day one. You, know, you may have to have a you know, the complete piece. At certain point of the scale, you may have to drop hardware and move more, more and more towards software. So I have many devices I call as Bosch today, branded Bosch. And the you know, minute it comes into my premises, uh, you know, with all my overheads, it becomes you know, 1.6 or 1.7. But at some stage, when I have built a community, I had to drop this brand, and anybody can make these connectivity devices. So the sensing device will get commoditized, but the intelligence will be valued. But you may start with the hardware, but I think you have to have a clear strategy to move away from hardware. So that's my perspective coming from a large company. So if you still... You know, if she's kind enough to ask questions, you know, otherwise we can interact outside. Thank you so much.